I've always been attracted to the art world. While doing my scientific studies and then my job, I also studied and practiced many art techniques. I started with ceramics, followed by mural decorations, then mosaics and gilding. Always curious to explore different techniques while unknowingly seeking something special, something different. By chance, I meet a fresco master. At a course, he was running at his studio. I knew nothing of the fresco technique, but I was quickly attracted to it. Under his expert guidance, I learned to paint frescoes over five intense and enlightened years. Hearing him speak about the technique was a revelation and such a wonderful journey. Here was a modern man who, through skillful artistry and a little alchemy, transported us back to ancient times. In a workshop that felt more like a medieval studio, my love and passion for fresco painting flourished. My endeavors and interest in artistic techniques comes from the lessons of two great teachers who I remember fondly and am grateful to for their guidance. My house is full of decorated furniture, paintings and objects using the techniques learned over many years. I feel like my life is inside each and every piece. Every fresco involves a complex mix of preparation and painting that does not always achieve predictable results. As the painting appears to be good, it's almost like a child you look upon with pride and disbelief that you actually made it. Often I take the time to look critically at my paintings, to analyze every brush stroke, remember every problem encountered and solved. It has happened that after painting all day, a single late brush stroke can destroy the work. The defect keeps drawing my eye to it and leaves me feeling unsatisfied. Just because the technique is so complex and takes a lot of work, I have learned to never settle for mediocre results. It's better to destroy the day's painting and start over again. I started painting frescoes about 10 years ago. I was immediately captured by it and found it fascinating for many reasons. It is an ancient pictorial method of painting that has endured throughout the ages. The earliest records date back to the 5th century AD. The technique continued through the Roman period Middle Ages and until the 18th century, where it adorns churches and Italian villas. The style is a centuries-old Italian tradition, and therefore it's a part of our heritage and a history of Italian art. The painting phase of fresco creation is only one part of the technique. It requires a range of skills, which are more or less equally important to achieve a final work that is excellent and long-lasting. Fresco painting is more challenging than most other painting styles. The materials are simple, natural and remain unchanged over the centuries. The execution requires readiness and skill to confidently apply paint. Michelangelo said frescoes were the painting of men as it demanded a high level of painterly skill and concentration. In Sennino Sennini's treatise on painting, written in 1400, he said frescoes are the most sweet and most elusive work to do. Frescoes painted centuries ago have been admired by men from the Middle Ages to the people of today. They may tell a story, a sacred history, fable, myth or legend. So they are like mural sites, pictorial history books that give people of all ages insights into past worlds. The things that fascinate me most about fresco painting 
are how the ancient techniques developed and survived over the centuries. Handed down orally from master to apprentice, some of the techniques were lost and others were rediscovered. One thing that has never changed is the need to be competent in the use of all of the materials, from plaster to paint and colors. Having studied chemistry at uni, I appreciate the rigor and need to plan carefully when fresco painting, to experiment in the preparation and use of colors and mortars. Fresco colors fixed to the painted surface, not in an adhesive way through a binder, but through a chemical reaction. The process is like the natural action that occurs in nature when colored marble is formed. Because the colors are embedded into a wall's surface, they become part of it and are very durable, lasting for centuries. Learning about the ancient frescoes, the historical times, the painters, excites me. Seeing them in real life and the detailed work needed to create them is really impressive. Retracing all the stages of this wonderful technique is my great passion. Frescoes painted by the great masters are nearly always admired from afar. It is a rare privilege to join a guided tour which uses scaffolding to see a restoration project up close. Usually, art historians analyze a work, its forms, style, allegories and the symbols used. They frame the fresco in the historical period and tell us about the painter. Seeing the quick, confident brush stroke up close is to really see the essence of a fresco. It is a remarkable experience to see the artist's lines and marks. Seeing the signs showing how the fresco progress over many days is an intimate and a humbling experience. Until recently, and for practical reasons, I have created my frescoes on insulating panels. Firstly, I lay a base of plaster on a panel called a riccio. Then, on top of this surface, goes fresh plaster on which I paint. As the panels are transportable, it means viewers all over can see them up close. The level of concentration needed when painting overshadows all else. Getting the painting done well and before the plaster dries is the priority. I still have much to learn and so many teachers to meet. The pleasure of learning more about fresco painting and how it has changed over hundreds of years encouraged me to return to university to study the great masters and Italian art history. Connecting with other fresco painters to create a community interested in sharing knowledge between us is a goal of mine. Over the years, I have met other fresco painters who, like me, share a common goal. Besides our love of our noble art, we all want to revive this unique Italian pictorial language through teaching courses and workshops. We have the duty to pass on this secular tradition, which is an artistic, historical and cultural heritage of Italian history. Having a passion in life is a very important thing to stimulate and discover of our own creative side outside of our works that can be sedentary, monotonous and technological. It's a very important thing. Having a goal to rediscover old traditions like fresco painting try to pass it on, studying new subjects, 
modern subjects. This technique is a very long-lasting technique that uses natural and ancient materials. So I wish that many people today could rediscover it and practice it again. How exciting it would be to see frescoes being painted on buildings in our towns and inside our homes. It's a very long-lasting technique, which uh, in itself tells a story of uh, permanence. It could be wonderful if we could write again our stories on the walls.